correct. Excuse me. It was 586 BC. Okay. Will there be any people who are resurrected during the second resurrection that will enter into eternal life? Or do you have you have to make it to through the first resurrection? You have to make it through the first resurrection. The second death is exactly what that is. Those that are that are brought back at the second death will be thrown in the lake of fire. That's the final judgment. That's why it says, Blessed is he that make it through the first resurrection in which the second death have no power. Someone says, Now you have for, for yourself become a religion. Why have you resorted to leaning upon your own understanding? Why are you interpreting what is plainly written? Even if you were to interpret the word virgin, you would have to interpret the words that follow abreast of it. Therefore, you are writing, rewriting the word of God. We didn't rewrite the word of God. The word is there in the original Greek before it was translated to English. And the Lord says, through thy precepts thy get understand, and therefore I hate every false way. You were taught that virgin had something to do with whether or not someone have sex. When virgin doesn't mean that at all. You were taught that in this pagan society. Virgin only means maiden or one of marriageable age, whether they're married or not. So it have nothing to do with whether or not someone had sex. You're taught that in your society. So no, this is not a new religion. This is what you would call new wine, which is truth. Something that this world is void of. So open up your understanding. All right, what's the next question? Someone says, if you ever need a place to stay in the Southwest, just let me know. Send, send an email and send me your information because we may just need that. And there's other brothers and sisters there that just may need that. So send, send your information, please. Gathering as one at AOL.com. Gathering as one at AOL.com. And let me say this clearly. I know a lot of you want to come on here to contend, but your arguments are futile. If you wanted to contend, you would have contended before we started. You would have went to the Catholic Church and told them to stop what they were doing. So let me tell you, brother, you need to stand in line. All right? Trying to knock down the truth. First of all, if you're going to start with tearing down lies, then you should have started before you even knew about us, brother. Mm -hmm. Go through your cat. Matter of fact, there's probably some churches right around your corner you need to deal with. Okay? This is not the place to contend. The world had thousands of years to bring truth and have lied on the Most High. Now we're going to bring truth whether people hear or forbear. And it cannot be disputed. So don't waste your time. All right? Because what you will get here, excuse me, is blocked. All right? So you can read Luke, the first chapter, and the 34th verse. You read it. We, we done with it. What's the next one? Does 1 Kings 12 and 30 indicate Dan was two tribes brought over? Get 1 Kings. Read it. I was good to ask. Huh? I was waiting to ask about the tribe of Dan. Okay. Thus, 1 Kings 12 and 30 indicate Dan was the two tribes. We just gave a precept to show that Paul says how they can be presented as chaste virgins before the Lord. These were people in the church which were baptized. So there is such things as being what you would call a spiritual virgin. It's, it happens when you get baptized and put on a new garment to be prepared for your groom. It has nothing to do with physical intercourse. And don't tell me the 144,000 are people out of the Catholic Church that never got married because they rape boys all the time. So they're worse than not being married. So please don't come to us with this. Go to 1 Kings 12 and 30. Let's get it. 1 Kings chapter 12 verse 30. Let's get it. And this thing became a sin. For the people went to worship before the one 
even unto death. This is not saying that that Dan was brought over into captivity because we can find Dan all the way up until until the time past past uh, Hycranus. Hy we can find Dan up until the time of uh, uh, what's his name? Maccabees, Judas Maccabees. Yeah, yeah. During the time of Judas Maccabees. So Dan was there for a while. Dan was in Israel for a while, okay? There was probably a small remnant of Dan brought over with the Indian tribes, but the majority of them stayed over and became a kingship. We're still looking into Dan right now. I should have some answers on that very soon. I followed them in Maccabees, but then after that, there's no other literature. I can find them in to definitively say exactly where they are. I know for sure that to some degree that the Danish or those in Denmark, because Denmark translates to Dan's mark or Danmark in Europe, that maybe that's a place they settled. But still I'm looking into it. All right, so I don't want to put out anything that's not so until we finish. But I know that Dan has something to do with, with Harad. And there's a connection there between them and Edom. Where they connected at and where they resided after that is what we have to figure out. Someone says this is off topic, but I wanted to know if you could let me know what the more teaching is behind what truth if they do have. The Moors, the only thing the Moors are really good for is if you're trying to go to court and and get off under some level of sovereignty. They understand those laws of sovereign very well and they have that type of information but as far as the Moorish society and what benefit they have for our nation and the truth, Moors are nothing more than Muslims, a black faction of Muslims. Okay, They believe the Muslim belief, they don't believe in the Bible, they don't believe in Christ, they're Muslims. So there's nothing they can add to us on the religious side. But they do have some information when it comes to sovereignty that can help people that want to become sovereign from the United States. Shalom, Gadaiwan. Someone asked the second resurrection. Is, is it the only for those who will be judged and not enter into the kingdom? I answered that already. All right. Um, one second. See what else we have here. Explain why we say the name of Christ in the Hebrew instead of saying Jesus. People, okay, the reason we say his name in Hebrew because his name was not Jesus. There was no J's. So if we're trying to get to the point of finding the truth of Christ, let's get in, in, in the Apocrypha where it says that, that, that in the Hebrew, yeah, in the, in the Hebrew, it tell you in the Hebrew, in one of the, the pre-laws in the Apocrypha, is a stronger vibration to the Most High. The prologue of the wisdom of Jesus. It says the prologue of the wisdom of Jesus. This is the prologue in Ecclesiasticus to show you why we say Christ's name in the Hebrew opposed to the pagan Zeus. Read. The prologue of the wisdom of Jesus, or Joshua, the son of Sirach. Wherefore, let me entreat you to read it with favor and attention, and to pardon us, wherein, wherein we may seem to come short of words, which we have labored to interpret. For the same things uttered in Hebrew, and translated into another tongue, have not the same force in them. So if it's translated into another tongue, it don't have the same force or vibration going out towards the Most High. Read. And not only these things, but the law itself and the prophets and the rest of the books have no small difference when they are spoken in their own language. So it's stronger when it's spoken in its own language. Okay. The pagans manipulated the book so that we... They manipulated his name 
so that we can get away from the name in, that, in which saves mankind. Christ was not a Greek. He was not a Roman. His name is Yeshua, and that name is power. That's the name he used to cast out spirits. That's the name he used to raise the dead. So now that we understand that that gives a stronger vibration in which he used himself, and that there's no other name on the heaven whereby man can be saved, we're not going to use a name that will deliver it to us from those who have oppressed us. All right. What's the next question here? I just wanted to say that college is just another way to keep us bound in here. I know I pray that the most judgments come so our people can be free. Someone says, I meant to say, was Dan with the, the two tribes? Forgive me. Was Dan with what two tribes? I don't understand your question. Oh, here go this guy again with the marriage thing. Listen, and the virgin thing. Listen, if, believe what you want to believe, brother. I'm finished with that. You Go, go somewhere else and argue. I'm done with that. We're not going to block him. He can continue to listen, but he can be ignored. What's next? And some people might think it's wrong to ignore, but Christ ignored people many days. Okay? The Lord say, abstain from foolish questions. We have the right to abstain from foolishness. Okay? It's easier just to go deal with someone that you believe, that believe the same thing you believe. Instead of trying to argue something, you will never, never, never convince us otherwise that Joseph wasn't Christ's father. When we can read in Matthew, the first chapter, and so 